Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. This morning I'm going to talk about a bit about Ottawa and uh, Ottawa is not doing very well in the climate casino at the moment. We're approaching um, record levels for the Ottawa River. So large parts of Gatineau and uh, cities, little towns rather along the Ottawa River are going to be flooded more severely than the floods uh, two years ago. Two years ago, there was um, an awful lot of rain in uh, March and April and that combined with the snow melt and also with some very dubious um, releases of water from northern reservoirs at exactly the wrong moment combined to give uh, record flooding in Ottawa along the, along the Ottawa River. This year, the snowpack is double normal. 90% of the water is still up in the reservoirs. So we've got a lot of local melting and local rain. The lower half of the watershed is mostly run of the river dams and there's no ability to store water. So, so the water levels are rapidly rising and I'm gonna talk about that. You know, in terms of um, other things that have happened in Ottawa, as far as the lucking, um, you know, having bad luck in the climate casino is the tornadoes that visited us uh, just in September of last year, and then the record flooding um, the previous year in uh, <clears throat> 2017. So those are the main topics um, of this video. Now, this is not, you know, um, you know, as much as I'm talking about Ottawa here, um, there's far worse events are happening all around the world. You know, we have another massive uh, cyclone hitting Africa. You know, the one a month ago caused huge devastation, enormous loss of life. And it's hitting some of the poorest countries in the world. And these countries have no ability to recover from the damage. So people often ask me, when is civilization gonna collapse? And I respond, well, you know, it's not it's not one event. It's an ongoing process, death by a thousand cuts, and uh, weaker places are getting hammered and not able to recover even now as as we speak. Okay, so collapsing civilization is a process. It's not a one shot deal. Okay, so this is uh, this is my Twitter feed. Okay, and. Uh, you know, just go to at Paul H. Beckwith in Twitter, find me. I'm posting all kinds of stuff. This is an interesting way, you know, sandbagging around a house to protect it takes an awful long time. So if you get this type of um, skirt, if you like, and if you fill it with water um, and you put it around your house, you know, as long as the water level stays below 90% 90, 90 of this, it's okay. But when it reaches a you know, when it when the water level rises up and a certain amount, this thing this whole thing can start floating. So if you're gonna use something like that, you wanna put sandbags on top of it to keep it um, keep it in place. Okay, so the big thing about the flooding in Ottawa, in Ontario and Quebec is that there's a dam that's at risk of failing. Now, let's have a look at where this dam is. It's on the Rouge River. So if I go to Google Earth, this is the, this is the um, dam here. Okay, why isn't my, uh, why isn't, I can't seem to zoom in and zoom out at the moment. Um, not sure why, but this is the dam here. We use this to zoom out. Okay, so go a bit further, go a bit further. Okay, so Montreal's here, so the dam's up here, Ottawa's here. So this thing runs into the Ottawa River, but it's far down river of Ottawa, so it, it won't affect Ottawa, but if this dam was to fail, that big plug of water will come right up here to Montreal. Okay, so that's just putting it in perspective as to where it is. Let's have a look. Right now it's holding but we're entering an unknown zone, says Hydro-Quebec official, with more rain on the way. Water levels at the hydroelectric dam at Bells Falls on the Rouge River, they reach heights, these heights have never been seen before. 
Okay, so there's a mandatory evacuation of houses downstream. There's not a lot of people living up there. Um, but, uh, you know, like I said, if that dam fails, the plug of water will, will come down into the, into the uh, river and run, into, run through to Montreal downriver. A dam like Bell's Falls is designed to withstand a flood that happens once in a thousand years. That's the design criteria. Today at noon, which was yesterday, we reached that level. And at that point, there's a protocol in which we notify civil security and residents of imminent danger. So the one in a thousand year flood is there. One in a thousand year flood means that there's a 0.1% chance of a flood of this magnitude happening in a given year. So one divided by a thousand is 0.1% percent when you multiply by 100 to put it in percent the average flow is 103 cubic meters a second but it's 980 it's almost a thousand cubic meters a second at the moment okay so this is the uh you know if this dam was to fail this whole area here would be uh possibly affected by a slug of water the dam's 16 kilometers north of the ottawa river Okay, the utility doesn't think it will break, but they are evacuating because they're in an unknown zone. If it ruptures, it would take 45 minutes for the floodwaters to reach basically buildings and cottages that are being evacuated at the moment. Okay, and there's some video footage of it, etc. Um, okay, there's lots of rain in the forecast for this watershed. Water levels at the dam could rise at further 70 centimeters Okay, so the problem is, is when the water starts going around the dam, and if it was to overtop it, then it can undercut the, the um, part underneath and uh, lead to a collapse. The whole thing could, could move. Okay, so um, Twitter, you know, doing, using the search key on Twitter is with hashtag flooding, for example, is one of the best ways to get all the up-to-date information. So since I updated it just a few minutes ago, there's been 29 new results. There's a lot of stuff going around. So if I just update this. Okay, so in Ottawa, a couple things have happened this week. A few days ago, the city councillors met and they declared a climate change emergency for Ottawa. This is a general thing. It's not just because it's not because it's specifically because of the flooding. Right? Lots of cities around the planet are declaring global climate emergencies for their municipalities. We need that to spread to provinces. We need that to spread to governments. We need to raise, you know, that will raise awareness of the grave situation that we face, that humanity faces from abrupt climate change. Um, and so, so that city council city councillors, so the municipal government, like I said, declared a climate emergency. And then the mayor just declared a, a flooding emergency, basically. So the army's arriving. Um, that means the army is deployed to um, do sandbagging and to help out local people because the water is still going to rise very quickly to record levels. This is the an image of the dam. There was evacuations that are continuing around this region. I mean, it looks to me like the dam is being overtopped. So, you know, this is in the Canadian Shield. There's lots of bedrock underneath. So it's not necessarily like dams in lots of places, but, you know, this looks, you know, this is eroding the banks and, you know, so how much bedrock is there? How much soils and sands is there? You know, how much, if the water rises, you know, half a meter more, 0.6 meter more, which is projected, you know, this whole dam could give way and this plug of water will, will uh, work its way downriver. Um, so this is, uh, these are, this is flooding, this is global flooding, right, all around the world. It's, Quebec's in there a lot, Ottawa's in there, uh, Hudson River, okay, all different places are our, uh, this is a Muskoka's. Um, there, there's dams in Muskoka that are that there's uh, structural integrity concerns. Okay, there's lots of stress, brace bridge. Okay, so there's flooding all over. 
And right now we're getting, uh, we're expecting 25 to 50 millimeters more of rain. Um, it's ongoing right now. So, so we're, um, like I said, Ottawa is not doing too well in the climate casino in the next little while. Okay. Um, my friend Matthew and Martin and myself, you know, we've been posting all kinds of stuff on the flooding. And I thought, you know, about a week ago, actually exactly a week ago, I said, let's have a bet on, on what levels the river can reach. So I said it, I expected a peak May 5th, 12,000 cubic meters a second. Matthew said the peak would be May 1st, 10,000. Martin said May 3rd, 9,400. Just to give you an idea, the record the levels, um, the flow rate was in 2017, the flooding, which was quite severe, had a flow rate of just under 9,100 cubic meters per second. So we're all predicting, you know, breaking that 9,100. And, um, you know, my prediction is the worst of, of the three of us. And I think I could start smelling the coffee. So let's have a look at what actually is happening. So if you go, this is OttawaRiver.ca, um, and these are the projections. Um, we're on the 26th now. Okay, the numbers haven't come in for today, but the projections for the next, you know, uh, on the 24th, these were the projections for 10,400 um, on the 28th. So my number of 12,000 is not looking so far out there now. Uh, hopefully it doesn't reach that, but it's very possible. Um, these are the present levels here. It hasn't been updated for the 25th yet, but uh, 8,056. Okay, th so it hasn't reached the um, record. You know, I expect this number will have jumped a lot when the today's numbers come out. Uh, but this is the site to go to, to. There's all kinds of information you can get on... This is the rivers, uh, the reservoirs in the far north, the, the, the levels and the peak levels, the uh, latest bulletins, um, okay, and the hourly data. I haven't been able to get the hourly data to, to work yet. I don't know if that feature is working. Anyway, this, um, the Ottawa River Regulation Planning Board, they're, they're doing a lot better job this year than they did two years ago. And like I said, you know, lots of, um, there was lots of water dumped from, I believe it was the Dejo Shem. You know, they, they, this reservoir was emptied out about three or four days before the peak levels in 2017. And that plug of water came downstream and the water rose on the worst day of flooding in Ottawa in 2017. It rose about 10 inches in a few hours on that day of the worst flooding over top sandbags caused <coughs> huge amounts of damage. Um, and uh, I have, I did a bunch of videos when this happened uh, a few years ago and talked about it, you know, record. So if you just Google Paul Beck with Ottawa flooding, once you're in YouTube, uh, record Ottawa River flooding from climate change, uh, Ottawa River flooding, human error versus act of God. I sh there's a plug of water that came through. And this is a few days after the Dejo Shem Reservoir was dumped, you know, huge amounts of water was dumped from this 70 kilometer long reservoir and that plug of water came downstream and can be, I think it can be correlated to this big rise here. Uh, Ottawa River Flood, Human and Natural Elements, Part 1, Part 2, Part 3, okay? there's I have lots of videos from last year explaining this, or two years ago explaining the situation. Like I said, this year is different because the snowpack is a lot worse and we had a colder spring, um, and but now we're getting huge amounts of rainfall. You know, rainfall in April is two and a half times normal two years ago and it's about double now, so this is one of the problems. This is Climate Reanalyzer just shows you the rain that is coming on the way. So, you know, Ottawa is somewhere up here and what you can see is this is a 10-day forecast. So there's lots of, you know, the, the blue is the snow, the green is the rain. And uh, what you can do, if you go to Climate Reanalyzer and look at the GF GFS 10-day forecast, you can see the dates here and you can see we're expecting huge amounts of water 
rainfall uh, yet to come. So anyway, thanks for listening.